Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah There's a lot of talk about reform that's, ha- that's taking place in the Muslim world and of course everyone has something to say about the leaders um, uh, the leaders of the Muslims and all the controversy and all the differences and many people who even adhere bi idnillah ta'ala to the manhaj of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa amuman you know they have not just questions but many of them or some of them tend to spend their time and their effort speaking about the muslim rulers or plain and simple declaring them not to be muslim and making takfir and la shak there's a lot of oppression and a lot of sin that's becoming widespread in the world and la shak that there's a need for us to adhere to the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and no doubt our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said attaqullah wa sam'i wa ta'a وَإِن تَأَمَّرَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَبْدٌ حَبَشِيٌّ فَمَن يَعِيشُ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَرَى اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam he said that fear Allah he first began with taqullah and he said وَعَلَيْكُمْ أَسْمِعِ وَطَاعَ The messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fear Allah and then he said it's upon you to hear and obey and then he said wa in ta'amara alaykum abdun habashi he said even if an ethiopian slave became your leader that you need to hear and obey letting us know that that leadership as long as the person is a muslim and they have become the leader through some legitimate islamic means then we have to hear and obey them and even if that leader practices sin and implements sin and is oppressive that still you have to listen and obey and so many ahadith and so many ayat affirm this for us and affirm this for us as not just an affirmation but as a principle of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said asmiu tala mari al muslim fi ma yuhibbu wa qari ma lam yu'miru bi ma'siyah fa idha umira bi ma'siyah fala sam'a wa la ta'a The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said Hear and obey the Muslim leader Asmi wa ta'ala mari al muslim fi ma yuhibbu wa kariya for those things which you love and those things you hate ma lam yu'miru bi ma'siyatin as long as he does not command you to do disobedience to Allah and if he commands you to do disobedience to Allah there's no hearing and obeying in that command So habita fi Allah from the usul of ahlus sunnah have usul of ahlus sunnah this is why you hear salafis and you've heard ahlus sunnati wal jamaa throughout history f- defend this principle emphasize this principle and dis- that is a principle that distinguishes them from ahlus takfir and that is a, a principle that di- distinguishes them from the extremists and that is a principle that distinguishes them from ahlus bid'ah is that they don't believe in the rebellion. We don't care about ahl bid'a. Ahl bid'a hate that. They want to rebel. They want to spend their time talking about leader so and so, leader so and so is this, leader so and so is that. He's doing this, he's doing that. Nothing productive even if they don't live under that leader. All they do is spend time speaking about them without looking at their own shortcomings. Without looking at the implications of their own masiyah. And no doubt we're not happy with anyone's sin. And no doubt we don't support anyone's sin. But the point of where we dis- 
disagree with some of the Khawarij and some of the people of Takfir and some of the people affected by their minhajiyah, their minhaj, like the Qutbist and others. We differ with them because we do not expel the Muslims from the deen due to sin, even if they make mistakes in their rulership of the Sharia, that these things have qawaid wa dawabit wa asul and mu'ana. They have principles. And likewise, we don't believe in rebellion or speaking about and rejoicing in the sins of the leaders. So this differ, this differs, uh, distinguishes Ahlul Sunnah from Ahlul Bid'ah. So going back to the hadith that we mentioned, the Prophet ﷺ said that the ones who lived after him, for Sayyidah Khalaf and Kathira, they're going to see many differences. Many differences. And that's what we see. We see so many differences. We see so many things happening in the world. And we see so many people who are belittling the Minhaj of the Salaf. So many people who have new ideologies, putting posts on Twitter, and, you know, to all of their followers around the world and this and that and the other. Hey, the Salaf had their interpretation, but it's okay. That doesn't restrict us from having new, new interpretation, basically. And you see the danger and where that leads. You see the danger of this fikr and where it leads. Likewise, even these same individuals that make these types of posts and statements, they've been on bid'ah for years. And Allah Sunnah has been refuting them for years. But most of the people don't want to listen to that. And that's okay. Because all, inima alaykum balag. It's only on Ahlul Sunnah to, to give you the evidence. And then keep practicing the Sunnah. Not to dwell on those issues. But, Ahabati Filah, I want you, I want us to understand the importance of adhering to the usul of Ahlul Sunnah. And that it's not based on our hawa and our desires. Or that we're defending sinfulness. Or that we defend wickedness. We're displeased with sinfulness and wickedness. But we don't believe in rebelling against the sinful and wicked ones. Nor do we believe in sitting around and eating their flesh. Nor do we find it productive. And we see that it leads to shar. Had the minhaj salafiyah. Had the minhaj ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. And I challenge you. Anyone who goes against that to go to the books, the codified books of the Salaf, not examples, individual examples. Yes, there were some Salaf, some from the Salaf who made mistakes and rebelled against leaders, even from the Tabi'een. But that doesn't make it the Usul of Ahlul Sunnah, nor did that, does that make it correct, nor does it mean that their ijtihad was in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm and nafiyah, wa riskin tayyibah, wa amalan mutaqabbilan. And may Allah forgive us of our many sins and our shortcomings and bless us to be better Muslims, worshiping Him, tabarak wa ta'ala, and exalting the minhaj of the Salaf al-Salih, and exalting the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, which the minhaj of the Salaf al-Salih is built upon, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم